It's Tuesday, the 6th of June, the 75th anniversary of the D-Day invasion in Normandy. And today I want to replay a very special video I recorded in 2015 at the Reno National Championship Air Races. I was starting to do a video on a very historically accurately restored North American P-51B model Mustang. As I was going over the airplane, I noticed this veteran in a wheelchair, looked to be about World War II vintage veteran and I just got the courage to just go up and start talking to him and boy did we talk. I met for the first time ever Vern Bothwell of Indiana, P-51 pilot. We had a great conversation, a great interview. Vern has since passed away about a year ago. Enjoy. You've seen lots of P-51s, but you got to see this one, a P-51B model, an Oshkosh award-winning, most authentic P-51. We'll show you around a little bit and see why this one is such an amazing aircraft. First, look at these wheels. That's original. See the zinc chromate? And all the stenciling is 100% accurate. Here's the V12 with exhaust plugs put in there. Yeah, this is the Rolls Royce 1640 Merlin engine, liquid cooled V12. There's the oil tank right there. No, that's not a bomb. That's a that's a um, fuel tank, auxiliary fuel tank, 75 gallons. Now these are FAA required stenciling here, but this is correct stenciling. The B model Mustang had two 50 caliber machine guns mounted in each wing. The later model, the D model Mustangs had three 50 caliber guns. Now let me show you something unique about these guns. Now this is something you just don't see anymore. The 50 caliber ammo lined up in the wing with the feeding tubes into the machine guns. Now on the B model, they laid these machine guns down at an angle to fit better in the wing. In the later model Mustangs, they took the 50 cals and mounted them upright, three of them. And the difference was this particular model with the guns laid down tended to jam more frequently than the later model Mustangs with the guns upright. I think I got that right. I might have that backwards, but I think that's one of them jammed more than the other. And I think it was this configuration that, that landed itself to jamming more. Now this is how you tell a B model Mustang from a D model. It's got this turtle back um, fuselage configuration instead of a bubble canopy. That's how you can tell the early, early model Mustangs. Very, very rare. Here's your uh, flap indicators right here. Just look out the cockpit and see how many degrees of flaps you got down. What goes up in there, Pete? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, see? See the wheels? They tuck right up in there. Don't touch. Yeah, they run just like that. Here's your 40 gallon um, fuselage tank here, and of course they had the wing tanks. And look at this, an original data case, and there's your oxygen cylinders for breathing. In pristine condition. Oh, you go. Oh, you stop them by. Yeah. Well, we got to pick up. There's the stock gun sight and the rear view mirrors, and all the instrumentation of a stock P51. Seat and parachute. Do you know a thing or two about this old airplane? I've got 376 hours in them. In a P-51? Yeah. Which models? The B, C, and D. Really? 
Yeah, I was an instructor at Bartow, Florida. Really? Yeah, in 44 and 45. Wow. Yeah. We flew every day except we had a half day off uh, Saturday. Yeah. And then we had all day of Sunday. Oh. And, and did, every, every day we flew then after that. And did you do uh, combat first and then come back as an instructor? I did combat in a Martin B-26 in the Mediterranean theater. Flew out of Africa and Sardinia. And then the, then you came back and, and instructed in the Mustang. And, and got into fighters and uh, flew them from October 44 to October 45. And you were instructing during that period? The last six months. Last six months. Yeah. Oh. Uh, when I came back in 44, they had more pilots than I knew what to do with. Okay. And they were disbanding the WASP at that time, too. Okay, yeah. And I was a twin engine pilot. Right. And uh, I got to fly some of the WASP back to their final destination. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh? And they just sent the poor wasps home with very little recognition at all. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. can you tell me about the guns on this one? This got the two 50 caliber guns on the B model. Yeah. And which one? Go ahead. They're 50s. And, and these are laid down at an angle, but the D models, they stood them upright. Do you remember which one jammed more or did you have problems? The, the D model, there were six, and I had three on each on Three the on each side, right. Yeah, yeah, the B just had the two on each side. Just the two? Yeah. Did one of them, did one design tend to jam more than the other that you recall, or? Uh, really, we didn't have that problem. By the time I got in there, they had all that stuff solved. It's worked out. Yeah, yeah right. they had that worked out. Uh-huh. You know, it, it when we entered World War II, we didn't know what we were doing. Yep. You know, and we had to solve our problems as we went along. Yep. And uh, um, on the on the B-26, they called it the Widowmaker. Yeah. Because we had so well, many accidents. One a day in Tampa Bay, wasn't that one the old? One a day in Tampa Bay, uh, <laughs> the Widowmaker, uh, the pro flying prostitute. No. Yeah. No, yeah, no visible, visible means, means of support. support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that was a real high performance aircraft, and you were putting young guys in there with very little experience. Some of them had none at all. We did not. I didn't when I went over. Uh, we flew our own airplane over. Uh huh. Well, we went to Omaha, Nebraska, and, and picked up uh, a new Martin B 26 B 10. Okay which was a longer wing version. Okay. That was the first longer wing to come out on it. Uh-huh. And, but it cut the, the uh, top speed about 35 miles. It will get the top speed on it was 285. A little less. The uh, short wing version was about 325. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I joined a combat outfit, I was in the 17th bomb group, mm -hmm. which, uh, was where Doolittle got all his Tokyo Raiders out of. Oh, really? Yeah. The pilots and the airplanes, or the pilots mostly? The, the pilots, yeah, all, all the pilots were yeah. out of the 17. Ah. They were older guys. Yeah. Uh, I've got, see that right there? Oh, yeah. Who's that? That's Cole. Yeah. That is, uh, what's Doolittle's co pilot. Oh. And uh, he's still alive. Wow. I think he may be out here. They really? made an announcement the day before yesterday that it, it was his 100th birthday. Oh, <laughs> and he's out here today, yeah. huh? I Not too many of you guys around left around. Uh, <laughs> I got this signature off of him two years ago at Oshkosh. Oh, good. All right. And uh, went to see Bob, Co uh, Bob Hoover yesterday, but Bob's in bad shape. Oh, he's in bad shape now? That's oh, too bad. Man. Yeah. I don't think Bob even wanted to be here. Oh boy. Huh. Uh, huh. Well, you're in good shape. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'd be in better shape, but two years ago, I had an engine out. <laughs> uh oh. And picked a field, and brass was about that tall. Oh, really? <laughs> Just two years ago? What kind of plane was that in? I had a, a Woody Pusher. Oh, like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had an eagle head on it. Did you flip that pusher over in the grass? Yeah, I flipped that pusher <laughs> over the grass. <laughs> Obliterated my eagle head. Yeah. Uh, kind of messed it up a little bit. Yeah. I screwed up my right 
Well, I broke my right heel. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> some more bones in that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm on this thing. Oh, man. <laughs> Nine and three. That's awesome. And uh, when you were doing the B-26 in combat, was it primarily bombing or did you get involved in some strafing and that sort of thing? Bombing. Just they bombing. Had already, when I got there, they had learned their lesson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they tried that crap. <laughs> you know, Stip bombing and yeah. stuff like that. And uh, two weeks before I, I got joined the outfit, they had tried they put three down doing the skip bombing on a road bridge going yeah. into Tunis. Yeah. When they got into this bridge, here set some tanks. Yeah. On the bridge, and they were flying right into the to the ADH on them tanks. Oh boy. Wiped all all, all three of them out. So they were coming in at a at very low level. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right at them. But they had three up at six thousand. Yeah. Them boys got the bridge. They got it, huh? Yeah. Uh huh. But by the time when my first mission, uh, by that time they was going up 10,500 feet. Yeah. Uh, what we do, we take off, leader go out, and then we join in with them, cut them off, and join in. Yep. And uh, we'd go to our, our target at 180 mile an hour, mm -hmm. climbing 500 feet a minute. Okay. Getting up to 10,000 feet, leveling off, going 180 mile an hour. Mm -hmm. Get to the IP, open your bomb bay doors, yep. make your run, drop your bombs. Then you close the, the bomb bay door and yep. you went down. We, we pick up to about 245, 250, getting out of the flat. And, and would you get out of flat? So would you. Uh Get out of that altitude and just and d descend to lower altitude after the yeah, bomb drop. We, we usually did send it down to about six thousand feet and got and out of it. Back to the home and six thousand. And so on the bombing run, you're in a formation, we a pretty had tight four, formation. A tight formation. You had to fly a tight formation. If you didn't, the fighters come in on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And were you using Norden bomb sites in the B-26? Do you remember? Or? Yeah, but here you are. Yeah. The lead bombardier was the only one that had the sight. It's only one, yeah. yeah. The rest of them toggled, toggled off of Off of him, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you really didn't need a bombardier. Uh, all you needed was somebody to just toggle. <laughs> toggle along behind the lead. Yeah. Now, did the other aircraft have Norden bomb sights on they board? Had, each element leader had one. Each element leader, okay, gotcha. All right. Uh, and how? They didn't use them unless, you know, the, the lead failed. And how many. Um, Aircraft in an element. Uh, you had three in an element, but sometimes four. It depends yeah. on if you made it through a, a box of a deal while you'd have the fourth man. Okay. Uh, usually we either had 12, 24, and the maximum was 36 aircraft. Okay. For That's... The, each squadron. Uh huh. And we had three squadrons uh, in the, in the, in the group. And how many missions? <laughs> how many missions before you got to uh, be done with the combat? All right, I flew forty. Forty. Yeah. What was the min requirement? Do you remember? Or was there? Uh, you you had to fly forty. Forty. Forty was a requirement. I, yeah, All right. At that time. Uh huh. The, the last day that I flew forty missions, they raised it to sixty. See. <laughs> See. Uh, do a little was commander of the 12th Air Force at that time. Okay. And he would come over and fly his own reconnaissance. Uh-huh. He'd come over and pick a short wing version, which he could get about 325, 330 mile an hour on the deck. Yeah. And he'd fly fly his whole whole thing. Yeah. And uh, if if he had some if he had some uh bombs on why he'd skip them. Oh yeah? <laughs> and so skip bombing was a matter of getting down on the water and trying to skip them off the water at low altitude? No, he'd, skip, he'd skip bomb an airport. Oh, really? And roll yeah. them down the runway? Roll them down the vetments, trying them and into the hangar. <laughs> what kind of altitude would you release for a skip? good skip bomb? Probably about 50 feet. Oh, right on the deck, huh? <laughs> he was 
as far as I'm concerned, the super pilot. Really? Of, of that time <laughs> in our area. And of course, he came from a real air race background history, oh, yeah. and only the air racers had yeah. the technology, kind of knew what was going into World War II, and the rest of the military way behind, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember, he, he wrote a book. He cracked up a P-26. I don't know if you know what you're talking about. A P-shooter? The P-shooter. Yeah, Boeing yeah. P-shooter. Yeah. yeah. And they asked him what the problem was, and he said, well, lack of experience. Oh, really? Right there? Yeah, he knew. <laughs> he knew right away. <laughs> he got it too slow. Yeah, yeah. Sold it out back Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, oh, no, uh, he was a great individual. Um, yeah. This outfit, when I joined it in, in June mm -hmm. of uh, 43, uh, my commanding officer of the 17th was Green, who was uh, Tokyo Raider. Yeah. And uh, what was his last name? Green. Greening. Greening. Ross Greening. Ross Greening. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a book that he wrote. Uh huh. Out of the Washington, Washington State. Uh, that uh, I called it. Uh, not as brief. Not as brief. Yeah, because <laughs> never. Yeah, nothing, nothing ever. Went, nothing went as we were briefed <laughs> anyway. It didn't make any difference. Yeah. <laughs> we, we did. We took what coming along. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And you had to make it up as you figured it out. Wow. Uh, uh huh. And your name? Vernon Bothwell. Vernon Bockwell. Bothwell. Bothwell. B O T H W E L. Both well. Both well. Both well. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for all the great information here today yeah and for coming out too man yeah yeah i tried to hit all of this stuff yeah yeah good well that was a great little interview we'll put it up there on youtube and Is look that for what it you're gonna do with that yeah yeah if that's all right with you yeah that's just fine with me okay great yeah yeah all right Oshkosh this year they started the interview with me and the next guy said well how many airplanes did you fly and i said well <laughs> i started out with a 19 PT 90. Yep. And went to the BT 13. Mm -hmm. Went to the AT 9 and AT 17. Yeah. He cut me off. Well, geez, you didn't even get started. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's just barely through training. You know, he di he didn't let me get to the blood and guts there. Yeah, yeah. Which was so? What are the rest of them? You got the B twenty six, and then the uh, what all else? B twenty six and the and the P fifty one. And the P yeah through. yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, hours. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh. I tell you what. Yeah. I flew combat and Mediterranean theater. Right. That was the best theater to fly in. If you got to go to war, go to war in the Mediterranean. <laughs> that was pretty okay duty, huh? Yeah. The weather was beautiful all the time. <laughs> Good weather for daylight yeah. bombing. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know if it works that way anymore. They yeah. never pick a spot like that. <laughs> Real genuine World War II bet here at the P-51B. What a great story. What a great chance to talk to these guys. It's so rare to find them these days.